Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the buckling of columns. Columns are long slender members subjected to an axial compressive force. Buckling is the lateral deflection of the columns. The goal is to design the columns that can safely support their intended loadings without buckling. The main characteristics of an ideal column are it is perfectly straight, materials are homogeneous, Load is applied through the centroid of the cross section. Materials behave in a linear elastic manner. Consider an ideal column that is pin supported. The goal is to determine the critical buckling load for this column. The ability of the column to remain stable when subjected to an axial load depends on its ability to restore itself when it is subjected to bending. From chapter 12, the differential equation that relates the internal moment in the column to its deflected shape can be written as follows. EI times D squared V over DX squared equals M. And from moment equilibrium we can write EI times D squared V over DX squared equals negative PV. We can rewrite equation 2 as follows. d squared v over dx squared plus p over ei times v equals 0. The solution to the second order, linear differential equation, will give us the critical load. Equation 3, originally solved by Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler in 1757. Therefore, the critical load, sometimes referred as Euler load, and the buckling equation is called the Euler equation as follows. PCR equals pi squared times EI over L squared, where PCR equals critical load on the column just before it begins to buckle. E equals modulus of elasticity. I equals least moment of inertia. L equals unsupported length of the column. For the purpose of engineering design, it is common to express buckling capacity in terms of stress as follows. Sigma critical equals critical load over area equals pi squared times EI over L squared A. I over A equals R squared, where R is the radius of gyration, therefore, the geometric ratio L over R is called the slenderness ratio. It relates all of the relevant geometric parameters, L, I, and A. Also, R is the smallest radius of gyration. Therefore, buckling occurs about the axis where this ratio gives the greatest value. Critical stress is an average normal stress in the column just before buckling occurs. This is an elastic stress and thus, critical stress is less than or equal to yield stress. Now we're going to look at buckling of columns with various types of supports. The Euler's formula for columns having other types of supports can be written as critical load equals pi squared times EI over KL whole squared. And for critical stress, critical stress equals pi squared times E over KL over R whole squared, where KL is the effective length, which is the distance between the zero moment points or inflection points. It is defined as follows. LE equals KL. K is the effective length factor. It is a dimensionless factor that accounts for end condition. The effective slenderness ratio is defined as KL over R or LE over R. Now we're going to look at effective length factor K. Based on the support conditions of a column, the effective length factor K can be determined as follows. If we have a column with pinned ends, the effective length LE, which is the distance between zero moments on the column, equal to the length of the column L. This means K is 1. In the case of a column with fixed and free ends, the effective length LE is 2 times of the length of the column, meaning that K is 2. 
If we have a column with fixed ends, the effective length, LE, is half of the length of the column. Therefore, K is 0 0.5. And if the column has pinned and fixed ends, the effective length of the column is 0 0.7L. This means K is 0 0.7. Now we're going to learn about access of buckling. Buckling always occurs about the access where the slenderness ratio KL over R or LE over R gives the greatest value. A column will buckle about its axis with the least moment of inertia, provided the effective lengths and the support conditions are the same. Now we're going to look at one example. In this example, an aluminum column is braced at its top to prevent movements at the top along the x-axis. It is fixed at its base. We are looking for the largest allowable load, P, that can be applied. Use a factor of safety of 3, the modulus of elasticity of 70 gigapascals. The yield stress for aluminum is 215 megapascals. Area of the cross section is 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meter squared. The moment of inertia about x axis is 61.3 times 10 to the power of negative 6 meter to the power of 4. And about y axis is 23.2 times 10 to the power of negative 6 meter to the power of 4. Due to the bracing on top of this column, depending on the axis of the buckling, the support conditions for the column varies. If the column buckles around the x-axis, then the k equals 2. The top portion is free in y-axis and the bottom portion is fixed, therefore, the effective length of the column Le equals 2 times 5 equals 10 meters. Using the Euler equation, critical load x equals 424 kilonewtons. In the second scenario, if the column buckles around the y-axis, then both ends are fixed, therefore k is 0 0.7. The effective length of the column Le equals 0 0.7 times 5 equals 3.5 meters. Using the Euler equation, critical load y equals 1.31 meganewtons. By comparing critical load x and critical load y, the column will buckle about the x-x axis. The allowable load can be calculated as follows. Allowable load equals critical load over f times s equals 424 over 3 equals 141 kilonewtons. We need to check if Euler's equation is valid. We need to compare the effective stress in the column with the yield stress of the material. The critical stress in the column is critical stress equals critical load over A equals 424 times 10 to the power 3 over 7.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 equals 56.5 megapascals. Since 56.5 megapascals is less than the yield stress of 215 megapascals, the Euler's equation is valid. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Best of luck with the lab!